After two amazing months exploring in Alaska, we are so excited to be back in Canada to explore some more. Over the next few days, we're gonna be driving the 740 kilometer long Dempster Highway, which is an unpaved highway that takes you through incredibly beautiful scenery above the Arctic Circle to a town called Inuvik. And from there, we'll be taking the Inuvik Tuktoyaktuk Highway, another 152 kilometers to a town called Tuktoyaktuk or Tuk, which is located on the Arctic Ocean. And it's the furthest north you can drive in Canada on a public road. We're so excited for this adventure. We've heard that the road is pretty rough, so that makes us a little nervous, but it's also a bucket list drive, so we're so excited. It feels so surreal to be standing here at the start of the Dempster Highway. We've been talking about doing this road for a long time, so we're just extremely excited to actually be here doing it. Our goal for this road is to not break anything because the Dempster Highway is notorious for flat tires and cracked windshields. So if we can get back and have none of those issues, that would be amazing. Wish us luck. This road typically takes about 13 hours to drive and some people rush through it to get to Tuktoyaktuk as fast as they can. But for us, we've heard that there's so many beautiful things to see along the way. So we're in no rush and we're gonna take our time and soak it all in because who knows when or if we'll ever be on this road again. We're stopping off at Tombstone Territorial Park and the road so far hasn't been too rough, just a bit muddy. We've seen cars going the other way, completely covered in mud. So I think in terms of muddiness, this is just the start, but we're so happy to be here. Tombstone is considered the Patagonia of North America. And during this time of the year, the fall colors are gonna start popping off. And so this is just the start, but the colors are gorgeous. The trail that we've chosen to do is called Golden Sides Trail. This trail is just under two and a half miles and it's rated as a moderate trail with around 700 feet of elevation. And we're super excited to be out and exploring all of this beautiful nature. It is just absolutely stunning here. At the beginning of the trail, there's a gate and we didn't think anything of it. And about halfway up this beginning of the trail, we looked at each other and we we're like, this kind of looks like a road. So we looked down, checked out all trails. And this is actually where the trail starts. So we are three quarters of a mile in and then we still have the trail. So we didn't plan for the extra mile and a half to be added on, but it's not really a big deal because that beginning part was pretty quick. On this trail, we have seen so many different kinds of berries. We actually just tried a crowberry and it was super bland, so it wasn't very good. But we've seen at least four different types of berries and the environment here is just thriving. It's really, really cool to see. We made it to the top of the trail and the views are so beautiful. Look at this, so crazy. Mm -hmm. 
That hike was so beautiful. We're so glad we made the stop at Tombstone Territorial Park. If you are headed up the Dempster Highway, we would definitely recommend stopping off here. We definitely want to do some more hiking, so maybe we will on the way back down. But now, it's time to hit the road and keep going. Around 20 minutes past Tombstone is Two Moose Lake. This lake lies on a permafrost zone. If you didn't know, permafrost is soil that's been frozen for at least two years. And this is a popular feeding site for the Alaska Yukon moose, which is the largest moose in North America. We were hoping we were gonna see some, but all we're seeing is a lot of these little ducks over here. And they're super cute when we pulled up. They like took off into the middle of the lake, but they're still cute to watch from here. We're a little bit over two hours into our drive and up until this point, the road really has not been that bad at all. We've been on way worse roads, but we're only two hours in and we still have a long journey ahead of us, so I don't wanna speak too soon, but it is starting to get late, so we're gonna drive a little bit further and then find camp for the night. As you drive down the Dempster, there's a couple of signs that say like, watch out for horses. So Ashley was really hoping we saw horses and here's 11 horses. She spotted them, we pulled over and they're all just hanging out, eating. We made it to camp for the night and just check out these views. It is so beautiful here and the landscape is just so different. So we're super excited to be here. And we did read on iOverlander, which is an app that helps you find places to camp, that people who have stayed here before have seen sheep while staying here and they climb up these walls right here. So we're hoping that in the morning we get lucky and get to see some sheep. Good morning, good morning from our beautiful spot. Unfortunately, we didn't see any sheep or fox or any other animals, but at least we had some beautiful views to take in while we're here. But we do have a long drive ahead of us, so we're gonna get out of here. Driving the Dempster Highway means a lot of time in the car, so any chance that we see a pullout, we decide to get out and stretch our legs and take in the views. Got our first crack. We actually had this one above it already from like a while ago. Some guy came by flying, destroyed it. Luckily we have a windshield repair kit. I'm not gonna use it because there's hopefully not gonna be any more. My goal was to use it at the end of the Dempster. And so I'm hoping that doesn't get any worse, but that's pretty bad. We just came across this stop, wait for pilot car sign. And usually you see someone like standing there holding the stop sign. This is pretty interesting because no one's here. They have a weight at the bottom, just holding the stop sign. And I'm guessing the guy comes down, turns around, then has to flip the sign, gets back in the car. But the pilot car is actually coming now. And so I'm pretty interested to see the process on this because I've never seen a stop, wait for pilot car without a person holding the stop sign. As we make our way closer to Eagle Plains, we've come across some of the fires that have been going on around here recently. And it's so sad and devastating to see just all of these trees that have burned down. But thankfully the fire has been put out and it seems like they're getting better, but it's just always sad when you come across something like this. We've made it to Eagle Plains, which is considered the midway point between Dawson City and Inuvik, and is one of the smallest communities in the Yukon with a population of eight. It's the only hotel and place to get tire repair or car work done between Dawson City and Inuvik as well. And not only is it a hotel or a place to get your tire changed, but it's also a gift shop, a gas station, a lounge, a laundromat, and it has full camping facilities. And on top of all that, there's also a restaurant here and we've heard great things about it, so we're gonna grab a bite to eat.
was a couple different food options you could go for. There was a soup or a sandwich, and those were each like 12 Canadian a person. Or there was a buffet where you could get a whole lot of other stuff for $42.99 Canadian, which I feel like for the area we're in, it's a pretty fair deal. And just check out this food, it looks really good. On my plate, I have sausage with penne, potatoes, stuffing, vegetables, turkey, and rice. They do also have a salad bar, but we didn't notice until we loaded up our plates. So I guess we're going to eat this and we'll get a salad after. It was honestly so nice to just get out of the car, stretch, relax, use the bathroom, eat. The food ended up being delicious. And then there was also a lounge where you could play some games and just relax. So we did that for a little bit, but now we need to fuel up before we continue on. Just filled up. It was 245 a liter for diesel, 164 Canadian for half of the tank. But since gas is scarce, no matter what the price is, it 100% makes sense to fill up. We have a long drive still ahead of us. We're about halfway in for the day, so we need to get going. to the Arctic Circle. It feels so surreal to be standing here. We've been wanting to come here for years and now we're here. And this is a huge milestone on our Arctic Ocean journey, but of course, we're not there yet. Arctic Circle! <laughs> Ooh. I truthfully feel like the second that we've crossed the Arctic Circle, the landscape just looks so different. The mountains look different. The colors are totally popping off. It's just so beautiful and again, just so surreal. I can't believe we're here and that this is actually happening. We made it into the Northwest Territories, which is super exciting, but also something to note in the Yukon, we're on Pacific Standard Time. And now that we're in Northwest Territories, we are on Mountain Time, so we gotta change those clocks. Yeah, we got some foxes over here. Oh, and they're gone. We made it just south of Fort McPherson to the Peel River Crossing. Locally, this is called Eight Mile because it's located eight miles south of Fort McPherson. This is a free ferry service that is included because it's considered part of the Dempster Highway and it operates 15 hours a day from 9.15 a.m. to 12.45 a.m. And we made it with about 30 minutes to spare. That sunset is popping off. We made it to camp for the night. A little day two recap about the road. It was a little worse than yesterday. It wasn't anything crazy. We had a decent speed almost the entire time. There were some spots with construction and we did have to slow down because the road got rough here and there. Nothing crazy. Hoping it doesn't get any worse than today, but we won't know until we continue on. But we're tired. We'll see you in the morning. Last night we made it into Fort McPherson and we stayed at the free public campground. It's super well maintained and each spot has its own little picnic table and there are trash cans and recycling as well. This town's population is kind of small at 647 people and it's the first Northwest Territories community to pass driving up the Dempster Highway and it was established in 1848 after Murdoch McPherson who was the chief trader of the Hudson's Bay Co. and they established their posts here eight years prior. This morning around 5 a.m. we were woken up by some very crazy wind. We were not expecting it, not planning for it, and all of a sudden it was just super windy. And it's still a little bit windy now, but it's died down quite a bit. So we're keeping an eye on the wind because we are planning on driving all the way to the Arctic Ocean today. So fingers crossed that we can make it there today. <laughs> Today has turned out to be such a gorgeous day. The sun is out, the skies are blue, it's super beautiful. And we are approaching our second ferry crossing. This ferry goes across the McKenzie River and it operates from 8.30 a.m. until 11.30 p.m. And it's looking a little busy, so we might get the next ferry or maybe the one after that. It's 
so weird being in your vehicle and being on the ferry and it moving because your camper or your car almost just feels like it's floating, which it is, but it's just an interesting experience to be behind the wheel and then floating. Super weird. Especially because right now we're going backwards, so that's even weirder. <laughs> but we do have a great view. We got pulled on first and we're going backwards so we can see everything unobstructed. This ferry crossing does take a little bit longer because it goes from where it starts and then goes to a little village and then goes across towards Inuvik and then kind of just goes in a triangle picking people up and dropping people off. But we dropped whoever needed to get dropped off at the little village, picked some people up, and now we're going exactly where we need to go. Just saw a bear in the corner of my eye. Thirty minutes south of Anuvik, there's a little pull-off for a beautiful trail that takes you to an overlook of Chapman Lake, and it's such a nice day out. So we decided on our way towards Anuvik, we we're gonna stop and stretch our legs and take in the beautiful views. After over ten and a half hours of driving, we finally made our way to Anuvik, the largest Canadian community north of the Arctic Circle. The population here is just over 3,100, and it's 120 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Anuvik means the place of man and you can definitely tell the presence of man here because they have the largest grocery store that we've seen in a very long time here as well as a few gas stations and a lot of other conveniences basically showing that a large community lives here. The Anuvik Tuk 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 Highway was completed in 2017, so it really hasn't been around all that long, but it is open year round, so whether it's sunny and beautiful like today, or snowy and icy, it is still open, and it connects Anuvik to Tuk Tuk Tuk. After three days of driving, we made it to Tuk Tuk Tuk, which is the furthest north in Canada that you can drive, and the only Canadian community on the Arctic Ocean that you can drive to by a public road. The population here is 937 people, and it was founded in 1928 when the Hudson Bay Co. made a trading post here. And Tuk 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 actually means resembles a caribou. Local legend says that back in the day, a herd of caribou ran into the Arctic Ocean and turned into stone, and at low tide, to this day, supposedly you can still see them. One of the stops that we were super excited about making in Tuk 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 was Grandma's Kitchen to try some local delicacies such as muk tuk and dried fish. But when we got here, there was a sign on the outside basically saying that she can only sell it to locals and is no longer selling it to people passing through. I think that's a new rule, so it's a little bit disappointing, but what are you gonna do about it? After a long drive, we made it to our campsite here in Tuk Tuk Tuk, and there's really only two camping options here. There's one on the Arctic Ocean that's pretty pricey, and then one off of the ocean that's a lot less pricey, so that's the one we're staying at, but it is 10 p.m. despite how bright it is outside, and tomorrow we have some more exploring to do, and we're gonna catch you up on our thoughts about the Dempster Highway. Good morning, camp last night was pretty quiet. There were a few other campers here and it got super chilly once we got into Tuk Tuk Tuk. It's around 38 degrees this morning and what we're about to do is really exciting but also really nerve wracking because it is cold but our trip here is not solidified without doing it.
Might not look like we're going in the Arctic Ocean because we're fully dressed. It is 38 degrees out with wind, so it makes it even colder. Supposedly the water should be warmer than the outside air, but you cannot come here and not go in the water. So we are not gonna just dip our toe in like some people do or just dip our feet in. We're going all the way in, from the bottom of our feet to the top of our head will be covered in the Arctic Ocean's water. And we're excited, but we're nervous. A little more nervous than excited just because it is so cold out here. Oh! Oh no! Go! Oh. That was so cold, but so worth it, and it was an opportunity we couldn't miss out on if you make your way to the Arctic Ocean, especially via the Dempster Highway because it's a super long drive. You have to dip more than your toe and get all the way in. It's an experience we're going to remember forever, but I want to talk a little bit more about the Dempster Highway because preparing for this trip, there's a lot of, I feel like, misinformation or stuff that's not really true and or we didn't find it true. So on our way here, the road conditions is kind of what everyone wonders about. They were pretty good for what we were expecting. We've driven plenty of washboard roads, and so this was just a really long washboard road. But at some points, the road was actually really, really good and not really washboard at all. But then again, the time of the year that we are driving this, there's a lot of road maintenance going on. So the road is being fixed, and we happen to be driving those fixed sections. There were some rougher spots, but of course you're gonna slow down. There are warnings. And you shouldn't be driving this highway too fast anyways because the scenery along the entire highway is absolutely stunning even when it is flatter because it's kind of mountainous then flat then mountainous then flat and it's just beautiful overall and there is wildlife and you don't want to miss it and another thing are the spare tires people talk about you know people say bring two three spare tires well i see if you have a travel trailer or a fifth wheel which we did see going down this road that you should have maybe an extra spare tire but for us we had one didn't need it at all the worst thing that happened was the cracked windshield which the dempster is notorious for so it's kind of all worth it for the memories that we created along the way while this was a huge adventure we are so excited to make our way back south because we have so much more adventure in canada planned